thought it was about time I did another update. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I did uh, one of my prostate cancer videos. Um, I suppose in some ways you could say it's been a quiet few weeks health-wise. I mean, the cancer, uh, the latest report I had <clears throat> when I got the results of a CT scan a few weeks ago now was that fortunately the cancer hasn't spread anywhere else, which is fantastic news. Obviously, that's all over the moon about that. Um, uh, but to bring you up to it's not like nothing's been happening because um, the thing I've had to report on is um, that the effect of the hormone treatment has been extraordinary. Um, I've had, and I'm having one now, great timing, hot flushes. I've had lots of hot flushes at odd times. I'm trying to spot if there's any particular pattern about what brings on a hot flush. I can say that probably uh, eating a hot meal brings on a hot flush. Uh, having a hot drink brings on a hot flush. Sitting next to a radiator brings on a hot flush. Existing brings on a hot flush. Uh, like I say, I've, I'm, I'm having one right now. Uh, this creeping feeling of, oh, there's a sweat breaking out. And other than, gosh, I've... I started recording a video. I can't, there's no cause. I can't think of any cause as to why I would have um, a hot flush at this moment. Um, unless it's, you know, unless the hormone treatment makes you photosensitive because I've, I've turned on an extra light over there so that you can see me. Um, does turning on the extra light make me have a hot flush? I don't know. It's really, really weird. But I've had a lot of hot flushes. Um, and also... Gosh, emotional roller coaster. Um, it's been quite extraordinary. I mean, that, uh, there are some days where um, it seems like nothing at all would just suddenly make me feel like, oh my God, I'm choking up and I want to cry. Or sometimes I do burst into tears. Very strange. Certainly, um, anything that's kind of remotely sort of stressful or emotionally provocative. Uh, you know, anything, you know, watching, goodness me, watching an episode of Ally McBeal or something like that on the telly or um, a, a sad bit from a movie or even reading something. All my emotions, it's like all the, all my emotional nerve endings have become really, really raw and hyper, hypersensitive. Very strange. Um... um in odd ways, as I say, it's, it's not like uh, it's not like work stress. In fact, one of the interesting things I'm finding is that one of the escapes I have from all this, thank goodness, is uh, my work. You know, when I'm doing my work or my hobby, and I get into a flow state. Um, um, if you don't understand what a flow state is, that's that kind of feeling that you're so immersed in what you're doing that time just passes, you're not aware of the passing of time and you're getting a kind of deeper level of satisfaction and interaction with what you're doing. That really helps, that really, really helps. And I'm lucky that I, you know, I have a creative career, so when I'm you know, plunging myself into you know, writing books or doing my graphic design or in my hobby space you know when i'm I, I paint a lot of you know miniature model soldiers which is it's great as an escape you know i i, I pick up my model soldiers and the paintbrushes and put on an audiobook or something um and i find that really really good as as a release from doing this i mean i I've, I've not done my watercolor painting you know actual picture painting for quite some time but i would imagine that will also have a similar kind of beneficial effect where you can lose yourself in something and focus entirely on something else um but yes otherwise gosh what can i say um very very weird uh, and some days it will just be kind of um once a day other days uh like today, we had a bit of a crisis with one of our cats this morning. She, because she's elderly, they're both elderly, and she had kind of a, she's had a bit of a urinary infection, so we had to sort of rush her to the vet and get checked out and all the rest of it. And of course, one is aware of, you know, the mortality of our own pets and loved ones, and that all that kind of thing comes to 
seems to, for whatever reason, be more front and centre than it normally would. And, um, you know, this is obviously tied up, I'm sure, with my own feelings about my own mortality. You know, when you get cancer, you suddenly become, you know, extremely aware of life is short and um, what have I been doing all my life? Um, if, you know, if the worst were to happen, you know, and, you're, and if you were lying there having your last moments and thinking back, you know, would you have any regrets and that sort of stuff? Brings all this sort of stuff into focus, which is, of course, really, really heavy emotionally. Um, but they're things that we all have to confront at some point. Uh, and I seem to be confronting it now. So, as I said, this, um, those are the two main things. The hot flushes, which are just utterly random. I seem to be cooling down again now. So, how long did that last? A couple of minutes? Uh, the emotional thing, I'm feeling fine now. I really wasn't feeling fine earlier today, and there's been a few days last week where, because I'm recording this on a Monday, there were a couple of days last week where, gosh, I was really struggling and have to, you know, take some deep breaths and force it back down, because you're not always in a position where you can just let go and blub, are you? You know, around other people, or in the middle of doing something, you know, in the shops or whatever. Um... So that's kind of weird and persistent. And the thing to note is I've got my next, um, they call it a deposit injection, tomorrow. Tomorrow at kind of six o'clock in the evening. Um, so my next dose. Because the thing is, it's now been, that means it's been three months since I had that first hormone injection, that first deposit injection, which you remember Bob, the bump in my tummy. So... In, they're not allowed to put the bob in the same place again. So I don't know where Bob's going to be this time. Around the back, up the side, who knows. Perhaps I put him in the middle of my forehead. Um, but I, I suppose I imagine that um, at the end of the three months, the kind of the effects would probably have been wearing off. So I would have thought that, oh, yes, it must be kind of wearing out by now. No! <laughs> so... Um, they're going to give me another big dose tomorrow, so uh, I don't know. I mean, is it going to be that my body will get used to it, and then, oh, you know, that, that so first one's bad, second one, eh, mm, so on and so forth. So by the time I'm having my fifth or sixth, it's like, yeah, no problem. Or is it that, well, I'm already kind of a bit of an emotional wreck, and give me another extra dose now, is that, oh, I don't know. I'll report back to you, obviously, I'll, I'll tell you. And let you know what is happening. You know, I'll do another one of these in a week or two and let you know. So it's all a big mystery game. Um, so the next deposit injection tomorrow, which not looking forward to, got to be honest. But hey, uh, but it clearly has done its job. You know, the, the result from that CT scan I had a few weeks ago before Christmas. Um, when was it? November. Uh, and the results came back, oh, you know, it's fine. So the hormones have done their job. They've stopped the cancer from spreading any, anywhere else. So tomorrow, the 4th of February, I've got my next hormone injection. And then on the 13th, oh, an auspicious date, wow, uh, I've got a, m another MRI scan, uh, which is the kind of big tube Star Wars close encounters, throbbing blah, 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 thing, up and down, lying there for kind of half an hour, three quarters of an hour, getting zapped. Um, because obviously then that's their last opportunity to pinpoint exactly where the, the tumour is, how far the cancer's got, uh, for then targeting the radiotherapy rays. Uh, that will start, I believe, end of March, beginning of April, something like that. Um, the follow-up meeting with the oncologist is I'm going to have on the 6th of March. So so that's going to be, what, uh, two, three weeks after the MRI scan. So presumably at that point, he's going to tell me, right beside, we're going to start hauling you in here every day, Monday to Friday, for four, six, eight weeks, whatever it is for you to um, have your radiotherapy treatment. 
Uh, the MRI scan, you know, I've had one before, so I know what to expect, and I'll take some earplugs. Um, it is what it is. I'm not keen on needles, so I know that they're going to be shoving stuff in my arm. Uh, there's that the one stuff that kind of helps the the imaging of the scan itself, and there's the other one that kind of relaxes things. Um, so I'm not massively keen on that, but oh, it's tolerable, be all right. But of course, the, the the main thing that I'm still not sure about is the radiotherapy itself. And as I think I've explained before, it has much to do with how much time it's going to take. You know, going to the hospital every day, Monday to Friday, six days a week, uh, five uh, five days a week rather, uh, for six weeks or more. Being self-employed, that's potentially going to have a huge effect. You know, just in terms of the time taken up, regardless of whether I have any kind of adverse side effects to the treatment itself. Um, so very concerned about that and having spoken to someone who works for the citizens advice bureau actually about you know what is i'm self-employed are there any benefits i can get the answer more or less is mm, not really not really um i might get some kind of sickness benefit that might get me 60 or 70 pounds a week but that is a drop in the ocean of what I actually need. So it's extremely important to me to be able to keep working. Um, so we'll see, won't we? We'll see. But anyway, I'm not going to... This isn't a, a long one. It's just a short one to kind of update you on where things are. And if you're potentially going to have this kind of treatment, this is what to expect. The And obviously, as with everything, your mileage may vary. Uh, you may not have as many emotional and hot flush episodes as I've had. You may have more. Um, everything's down to the individual reaction to the particular kind of um, treatment you've been given. But this is what I'm going through. Um, so I couldn't say, you know, so far it's not been making me feel unwell as such, but it has been making me feel really peculiar. Uh, I have been experiencing stuff that, let's be honest, men aren't biologically uh, expecting. Uh, I'm experiencing the same kind of symptoms that a woman of my age, or slightly younger, would be experiencing going through the menopause. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, but it does give me an insight to what women of a certain age are going through when they report that they're having hot flushes. And yes, wear layers, you know, don't go around wearing just a thick jumper because, you know, it's, it's really helpful to be able to kind of, if you feel a hot flush coming on, you want to be able to take off that jacket or take off the outer shirt and still have, you know, a t-shirt or something underneath that. Um, carry around, if you've got one, a mini hand fan. Have I got one? Here we are. Useful tip. These. Uh, 10 quid or so off Amazon. They've got a rechargeable battery, so you plug that. It's got a, kind of a little mini USB thing there. So you plug that in to recharge it. And I find that um, this can last all day. Um, you know, on a, on a normal setting. It's got uh, three settings. Setting number one. I'll demonstrate. Setting number one. Setting number two. Setting number three. And off again. And that is a fantastically useful little thing. It can fit in your handbag, your pocket, your briefcase, whatever. And if you feel it coming on, uh, and particularly say if you're trying to work and you're working at a desk, I just because you can have it standing like that, just pointing midriff, head, where it's suffering the most, to cool you down, run it for a few minutes, because it's fairly quiet, actually. You get used to it. Um, and um, then just, you know, as long as it lasts, then turn it off. Because obviously you can find you're having a hot flush, you feel really hot, and you need that to cool you down, but then the hot flush subsides, and depending on the general temperature and weather outside, it's like, yeah, you could start feeling really cold. Um, so just, you know, switch it on and off. But I, as I say, a, 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 ch a single charge of that would run this, because I've done it in the middle of the summer, um, would run that all day. 
um, these things are really, really good. Or all night. That's the other thing. If if your uh, your sleeping arrangements may uh, get affected. In, in fact, my missus and I we've just bought a new bed, much much bigger bed, wider bed, which is a really good decision because um, she's of an age where she gets her own hot flushes, and I'm getting my hot flushes. <laughs> so the bigger bed means at least the heat can dissipate a bit more, rather than kind of being like this furnace in the middle of the night. Um, and having um, separate duvets, you know, shame about the romance effect and all the rest of it, but um, trust me, that's another thing. I will report to you that um, the hormone treatment, one of the, the effects is I've had no carnal thoughts of any kind for quite some time now. Uh, I have to think about it. I have to sometimes remember, oh, yes, I'm a bloke. That's an attractive woman. Oh, yeah. Normally, I'd probably be mm -hmm, thinking, gosh. But, no. Nothing. Nada. Nichts. Rien. Niente. Um, it's quite odd. But, as I say, that's something that I'm o I only dawns on me when I actually think about it. Right, that uh, I, I, I've been a man in the full vigour of my life for a long time, and the hormone treatment, um, I think they've used the term chemical castration. And as I mentioned before, one of the things with prostate cancer is it feeds on testosterone, which of course is what you know, that the masculine hormone. So, uh, they're what they're giving me these deposit injections completely suppress that um, and it really does completely suppress that um, so yeah that's that's another one of those things and that is one of the things I suppose that you know adds to the emotional hurly burly that um, uh, as a man that takes some getting used to I suppose but anyway, so there we are. So check out the fan. Um, potentially invest in separate sheets, separate duvets. So, you know, if you need to throw things off in the middle of the night, you're not going to disturb your partner. Um, and as I say, the next deposit injection is tomorrow evening. And I will report back on what additional effect or changed effect, or increased effect, or decreased effect that might might have, and then as I say, the, a couple of weeks time from now, that next MRI scan. So that's kind of February done, and then it's beginning of March, sixth of March. I see the oncologist again, and I assume it's the, at that time I get the timetable for right. This is when we're going to actually start wheeling you in and zapping you on a daily basis. Uh, they let you have the weekends off to recover. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I have a feeling that because of the time disturbance, the weekends may be when I'm then trying to work flat out to catch up on bluntly earning some money. Um, because if, just as I say, that the, the time... I Unfortunately, I don't do the kind of work where I could just take it and do it in, in a hospital waiting room you know i could sit there and make notes i can you know think and make notes and do some planning and stuff but the actual physical stuff i need to do i need to be at least have a laptop um and preferably my monster apple mac here and as you can see in the corner there doo -doo -doo -doo, that thing is my podcast recording uh, pod, my microphone for recording podcasts uh, and the uh, pop screen and headphones and stuff because uh, that's now what I do a lot of I'm recording two three four podcasts a month and so I need to be here to be able to do that uh, and I need to be able to think straight um, one of the things about you know being a presenter a podcast is particularly if you're interviewing guests you really need to be on your toes and be able to respond well to you know what people are telling you and you know work in the next question and you know it's a fun thing to do but it is tiring <laughs> i think people assume that it's just oh you sit there and blah 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 but actually there's quite a lot of planning and you need it's a bit like being a boxer you have to kind of 
be right there in the moment responding to what your guest is saying. Um, so anyway, so there's a lot of, I've got a lot of uh, apprehension, I suppose you could say, uh, about what it's going to be like. Am I going to be able to work? If I am able to work, what kind of work am I going to be able to do? Or am I going to look back and think, well, you know, what was I worried about? It was fine. You know, I hardly noticed it. Fingers crossed. Okay. Anyway, thanks very much for watching again. And I hope in amongst all this, uh, there's been some stuff that you might find useful. Uh, and I hope you appreciate the fact that, you know, yes, some of the stuff I'm telling you is a bit kind of, oh, I don't necessarily want to hear that. It's a bit kind of, Ooh. Um, if you're a bit squeamish and a bit shy, then, you know, unfortunately, these are the things that you have to confront. This is really happening to me right now. This is what I'm living. And I count myself as incredibly fortunate that, as I've always said, that the cancer got caught when it did very early, thanks to a wonderful nurse at our local uh, GP surgery here who just thought oh I'll just take a little bit of blood to test it out so I potentially owe her my life um, so that's fantastic I kept myself lucky that it's been caught that the hormone therapy seems to be working and has contained the cancer so the locally advanced prostate cancer hasn't metastasized hasn't gone elsewhere in my body or anything so that's fantastic uh, but I am still, you know, I'm going, this is what the treatment is. But even, you know, someone who considers themselves to be lucky and I'm not suffering, you know, I'm not having to go through chemotherapy, thank goodness. Um, so this is just a really mild, you know, a lot of people say, what on earth is he complaining about? You know, what's he worried about? He's got it easy. And yes, I have in many respects. So this is kind of... Um, this is a video diary by someone who's not on death's door. Thank goodness. Uh, I'm not on death's door, but I am going through this. And this is even, you know, the mildest kind of treatment. This is what it's like. This is what you have to deal with. And um, I just hope that some of you benefit from what I've been telling you. Okay, everyone. Thanks ever so much for watching. A belated Happy New Year as well. And I hope that you are staying well. And if you have any suspicions that you might not be well, go and get yourself checked. If you're a guy, uh, in your, and you're a, a white Caucasian guy and you're 50 plus, and if you're uh, a black guy, uh, perhaps slightly younger, kind of 40, 45 plus, Go and get yourself checked if you've got any kind of symptoms like, oh, it's taken me a little bit longer to have a wee than it should do. Anything like that, let alone any kind of more severe symptoms, get yourself checked. Okay, everyone. Thank you.